I'm really enjoying getting stuck into Logic Pro for iPad, but it's become pretty clear that this version 1.0 of the app isn't perfect. And it's reasonable to assume that Apple will be updating it with bug fixes, new sounds and improved functionality on a regular basis. But as it stands right now, there are some glaring omissions when it comes to the features that you would expect from a Pro DAW. I asked my community on YouTube and the members of the Logic Pro for iPad users group on Facebook, what features that are not currently present in Logic Pro for iPad would you like to see Apple add in a future update? And yeah, people had some thoughts. So in this video, I'm gonna run through eight of the best community suggestions for features we'd like to see added to Logic Pro for iPad. I should say that a lot of these came up multiple times, so if you don't see your specific comment addressed here, that's probably why. But I do really appreciate everyone who got involved and took the time to leave a comment. Also, if you aren't completely scunnered by the state of Zuckerberg's health site at this point, come and join the Logic Pro for iPad users Facebook group. I'll pop a link to that down below the like button. Dirty Solar on YouTube said, For me, it's all black backgrounds, even when working on a highlighted area. The ability to see a better contrast, options to change the colour and shade would help, especially in the main window. Also, I couldn't find reverse a sample in a region in the drop-down window. Yes, I've seen a lot of people talking about the overly dark design of Logic Pro for iPad and how it can make working in the app difficult. From an accessibility standpoint, there should really be a light or dark mode toggle somewhere, like in every other in-house Apple app, so I would really hope that this is implemented sooner rather than later. There is a stopgap hack you can do to improve visibility if you go to your iPad settings, accessibility, and then display and text size, you can toggle on increase contrast, which helps to separate darker colours better or you can even invert the colours, though that's perhaps a bit too drastic a change for me, honestly. As for reversing audio tracks, you can find the reverse toggle in the general section of the Regions Inspector menu, though this doesn't work on audio regions with multiple takes attached, for some reason. Ktweed100 said, Audio file browser for importing samples. This came up a lot in comments on YouTube and on Facebook. If you aren't aware, the current method for importing samples into Logic Pro on iPad involves using iPadOS's slide over feature to have your files window overlay the Logic Pro window and then dragging and dropping individual files into the timeline. I mean, it works, but it's not the most elegant solution ever. And considering other iOS DAWs already have far more straightforward file import workflows in place, it's a bit mad that Apple have gone for this clunky method. As many people suggested, adding a way to access the Files app via Logic Pro's browser window would be a far better way to import samples. Chris Garcia 6 suggested spatial audio with Dolby Atmos. Last year, Logic Pro for Mac added the ability to create a spatial audio Dolby Atmos mix and then release it on Apple Music. Personally, I'm not completely sold on the idea of surround sound and binaural mixing, but I know a lot of music makers are. The issue here is probably the processing power required and the fact that Logic Pro for iPad works on such a wide variety of iPads. The Dolby Atmos plugin on the Surround Master channel strip in Logic on Mac renders the audio and automation metadata for each object track, plus the audio from the surround bed, and then you can monitor it in various surround formats up to 7.1.4. Might be a bit too much for an iPad to handle, especially one not using an Apple silicon chip. I could be wrong, and it might be that Apple are just withholding this feature for desktop pros only, but I'm not holding my breath for it. Philippe Battles 7812 commented that they'd like to see Flex Pitch added. Flex Pitch in Logic Pro for Mac works in very much the same way that Antares Auto Tune does, allowing you to click and drag audio in the editor window to manipulate the pitch. 
Now this is a big miss in Logic Pro for iPad. As bar one that I know of, there aren't really any auto-tune style pitch correction options on iOS. There is a built-in fairly basic pitch correction plugin in Logic for iPad, but it's not particularly deep and doesn't give anywhere near the editing depth that Flex Pitch does. So yeah, really hoping we see Flex Pitch land in Logic Pro for iPad in a future update. That's not, I'm trying to cross my fingers there and it's just not worked. Next. Jumping over to the Logic Pro for iPad users group on Facebook then, Israel Putman, Vortex from Mobile Music Pro, and a whole lot more of you suggested, MIDI mapping for faders, knobs, transport, etc. Now this is a weird omission. You can absolutely attach a USB or Bluetooth MIDI controller to Logic Pro for iPad and use it to play any of its instrument sounds. You can't, however, assign any of that controller's knobs buttons or sliders to any of the controls in Logic Pro for iPad. MIDI Learn is a feature that has been present in the vast majority of iOS DAWs for ages. So to not have it in Logic Pro for iPad is just a bit bizarre, honestly. Again, hopefully this functionality lands sooner rather than later. Alejandro said, maybe not so popular, but I think a score editor. So useful for those who know about music notation and necessary to share the results with other musicians. This is another frankly glaring omission for the iPad version of Logic Pro when compared to the Mac version. If you're unaware, Logic Pro on Mac allows you to switch from the piano roll view in the editor window to music notation, which includes notes, rests, key and time signatures, and clef signs. A lot of musicians prefer to work with musical notation, so I think it's a bit strange not to include it in your Pro iPad DAW. I do wonder, however, if it's some kind of software limitation. GarageBand for Mac also includes a score editor, while the iOS version doesn't. The fact that this is mirrored in the Mac and iPad versions of Logic means there could be something else going on here. Reese Hughes added, Oh, and flipping save as, you savages. Autosave is not the one for bloody music tech. Yes, yes, a hundred times yes. It's incredibly frustrating having to exit out of a project and then immediately reopen it just to make sure that the changes you just made definitely did save. And don't get me started on the positioning of that save and exit button. Why would you put this so close to the back button in the browser? Why Apple? Why? Finally, Marco suggested a few things. MIDI mapping, file templates, option to disable plugin tiles and open first plugin and mixer, full screen instead, support for inter-app audio apps, audio in, option to arrange presets by instrument, preset favorites, global metronome settings instead of project, just to name a few. Edit multi-output for AUV3. Well, multi-out AUV3 was kinda solved recently when a user discovered a hack or workaround that kind of makes it work. Check out videos on how to do that from Jakob Hack and Jade Star. I'll link to those down below the like button. I won't dive into every point made here, though Marco has made some really good suggestions. But on inter-app audio specifically, I don't think that's going to happen. Apple put out the call to developers that inter-app audio was being depreciated back in 2019, and I don't see them going back on that, honestly. Fingers crossed then that the developers who haven't already ported their apps across the AUV3 will now do so. All right, thanks to everybody who commented to let me know what features they'd like to see in Logic Pro for iPad. I don't imagine we'll be waiting too long for updates to start rolling in, so it'll be interesting to see what Apple does actually add or improves inside the app. Let me know what features you'd like to see added to Logic Pro for iPad down in the comments, and if you could wrestle that like button into submission on your way past, I'd really appreciate it. Want to learn more about making music in Logic Pro for iPad? And you better watch this then.